So in light and being late to the party of the Firefox Terms of Use stuff coming out, it's interesting all the commentary I've seen on it so far about like, oh, Mozilla's like added a Terms of Use to Firefox. They added Terms of Use to this, that, and the other. They And they say that they keep with their the principles of their manifesto. Now, in the past, we've looked at a whole slew of things that Mozilla has posted on their blog that violate their, oh, manifesto. And you, I've heard people noting, including Lewis Rossman, that they've removed many of the references to selling data from their main page. So you can go look at, like, various other videos to, like, figure out what, oh has gone on with that and how Mozilla has responded and how other browsers have responded. Like, so LibreWolf has responded to it and in interesting ways. So of course people are recommending new browsers. Now the basic one everyone goes with is Brave. I mean, Brave is actually pretty good. You can turn off a lot of the extra crud in it that, you know, I really kind of, there was a little bit to where I did use it and then a little I got to the point where it's like I'm not really using it that much and I'm not getting that much out of it. So I could be better served with something else that doesn't include all the cruft in the background. And so I went with ungoogled Chromium for a little bit. Now from there I've kind of gone on to like Fire Dragon and so on, and I kind of like move between ungoogled Chromium and Fire Dragon for the most part, mostly Fire Dragon. But yeah, Brave is a basic one. It works out of the box. It comes with ad blocking built in, kind of like some others. Like again, Fire Dragon comes with uBlock Origin pre-installed, so you basically get a full featured blocker, ad blocker, and tracker blocker with Brave built into the browser much like a couple of other options you could look at. Now, in the interest of that, there are also other Firefox forks out there that I believe do remove many of the stuff that Mozilla added in and add in other features as well. One such is Midori. Midori has, how should I say? Midori used to be a GTK WebKit whatever browser, and I kind of missed that aspect, that part of it. But then when um astian took over they basically made it a stripped down firefox fork so you can see they've even got the sidebar here kind of like florp has honestly but anyway um that's neither here nor there but if we go into here we can go into the settings yeah i'm pretty sure it's actually a florp fork at this point but anyway uh yeah it's a florp fork Okay, anyway, so since we're on the subject of Florp, oh, Florp, base, if we go into, let's refresh, yeah, refresh, da 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 da, da. done. Okay, oh no, okay, so if we go into the settings here, we can go to privacy and so on. And this being a Firefox fork, it's going to, of course, recommend certain add-ons from the Firefox add-on extension stuff. It's going to have many of the same defaults. Let's look at... Uh, where was it? If we open up Sync, let's see. We could sign into Sync. And it's going to connect with the Mozilla account, it looks like. So... Um, let's see, did you remove collection and data use, improve Firefox suggestions? So it looks like a lot of that is turned off, possibly. Do, do, do. Now, again, Florp is a Japanese developer, is done by a Japanese developer. So there are a lot of things that may not be, that may be cared less about. Where is my other thing? Okay, I've got to go. There. 
This is important. Add. Yes. Okay. Anyway, so as you can see, it still works a lot the same. Oh, it. I haven't looked at Firefox in a hot minute. But yeah, Midori, basically stripped down version of that. I maybe more so. It's supposed to be lighter. And so you get a lot of the same stuff with it. If we go into privacy and security, of course, it's going to recommend uBlock Origin. Uh, we don't need that. It's, yeah. So Midori or Florp is another option. Fire Dragon, of course, is another Florp fork, but it adds in a bunch of more privacy enhancing stuff to it. So if I open up my Fire Dragon, I can go into here, go to settings, and we can see there's even more privacy enhancing settings in it. And for this one in particular, I believe Garuda manages their own sync server, or do they not? I believe Garuda has a their own sync server service if you want to use that for oh Fire Dragon. So you could set up your own instance of it and redirect wherever you need to if needs be. But yeah, Fire Dragon, uh, Flurp Forks, those are other options that you have. Now of course another one people are looking at is Ladybird. Um, Ladybird is a completely independent engine that it's a basically bare bones like fresh engine that they've built on their own and it's got some very basic settings so far so you can change your search pick your search engine go from there and then i can go and search up here it gives me a lot of the feel of the old midori before they turned asti and turned it into a firefox fork so i can go Firefox. No. Okay, fine. Um, duck. Shut up. I'm going to get to that one eventually. Don't worry. Doesn't want to do that. Okay, fine. Um, yeah. Again, not it's still a work in progress. But if I go to Brave, is it search dot Brave? Is it? Yeah, it is. Firefox, and you can see it's kind of still spotty with the way it loads things, but it loads it nonetheless. So, and if we want to do the bloat test, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. And it crashes, which leads us on to the next one. This is one that people have like have differing opinions on because Vivaldi. It has been around for quite a while, and I've used it quite a bit before in the past, too. And it also has its own tracker blocking stuff. So if I open the settings here, you've got a whole host of customization options. You can use it CSS even to customize how the tab bar turns out. And I've done that once or twice here and there to make the tab bar even thinner. But you've got your themes that it you can enable. You've got different appearance stuff start page let's see website appearance i can force it to be dark of course network let's see user agent brand masking so yeah where's our privacy and security so you've got all the blocking stuff well a lot of the blocking stuff so you can 
have your various blockers that are enabled in it and you've got your various permissions that are set up in it and yes uh, so that's another option you can also install ublock origin on top of that to add even more to it but it's highly customizable so you can have the tab bar anywhere you want it to be as well on either side pretty much whole host of options if you're into like that's into messing around with stuff it's got an integrated mail client calendar and like rss feeds thing if you really want that it does more where was the other thing keyboard shortcuts so, so it's even got power like commit <clears throat> keyboard hotkeys and mouse gestures and stuff like that so you could make it very vim like without too many, any plugins really so a whole host of options it's ridiculous and it supports the chromium extensions on top of that so uh, Vivaldi also, I think for a little bit, tended to be on the heavier side of things, like resource-wise. So there is that to look out for. It is based on Chromium and yada, yada, yada. Finally is Mail Poon, I mean Pale Moon. And this is a fork of old, old Firefox. I've done a video on it previously to also include Basilisk, which... They basically forked off of different UI versions of Firefox and have updated the oh, backend for it quite a bit so that you could have more op. Well, yeah. it was updated for newer web standards is about it. And it does support extensions like uBlock Origins, so you can look for that. Let's see if I can go to add-ons. There is a, see, you do have uBlock Origin. Um, whether, how up to date it is, is you, yeah. So you install it from Firefox Legacy right here. And that's in essence how you update it, keep it up to date. So 16, so it was updated back in 2021. How good that version of uBlock Origin is, is debatable, but it's there in for the legacy versions like this. If that's your thing, if you want the old fe feel of old Firefox again, that is an option, just saying. But yeah, those are other options for Firefox if you don't like Mozilla. And some of them actually somewhat have the financial backing to keep maintenance of the, oh, browser. If you liked the content, if you enjoyed it if you think i deserve it like comment subscribe leave any criticisms you have or what have you i appreciate it feed that algorithm like i said and i will see you guys in the next one